Hi, welcome to our Cisco CCSD networking course. In this lesson, we're going to talk about TCP IP. We're going to compare TCP and UDP, and we're going to discuss a couple of network applications and protocols. So, IP addresses are, are used to give each device a unique name around the world, right? But to make a logical connection between the ends of a network and provide transport services, from a host to a destination, you need a different set of function. The TCP IP transfer layer give you those functions. Another important thing that transfer layer does is to provide interface between the application layer, right? Which is what we use to talk to other programs and the internet layer, which is what the programs don't see. This hides the complexity of the network from the programs. So TCP um, and UDP are the two most uh, important protocols used at the transfer layer. The first one is reliable, but the second one can only communicate as well as it can. Application programmers can choose the service that works best for their particular apps, and both protocols allow the end host to start more than one session. This is important so that different applications on the end host can use the same IP address to talk to the network. Now, the application layer has functions that users or their programs can use. These functions are very specific to the application that is being done. It gives user applications the services they need to talk to each other over the network, and it also the layer where user access network processes live. These processes include both the ones that users do directly and the ones that they don't know about. There are just many protocols in application layer, and the new ones are already being made. So the terms reliable and best effort describe two different ways that um, computers can connect to each other. TCP is a connection-based protocol that makes sure IP packets are sent and received reliably, reliably and in the right order. Because of this, it is known as a reliable protocol. Next is UDP. UDP, or User Datagram Protocol, is a best effort protocol that doesn't require a connection. It relies on the application layer to determine the order of packets and find dropped ones. Each protocol has its own strengths that make it good for certain tasks. So let's talk about TCP first, right? It's a considered as a connection-oriented protocol. So some applications need to know that packets will arrive safely and in the right order. If any packets are lost, the data stream could get messed up. Take the example of downloading an app through your browser. This application won't run unless all of its parts are put together on the receiver in the right binary order. FTP is an example of an application that needs a connection-oriented protocol like TCP. When TCP sets up a connection, it does so with a three-way handshake. You can compare it to talking on the phone, like when the phone rings, the person on the other end says hello, and so does the person who called, right? And here's what you need to do. So here, the connection source sends a synchronization segment or SYN packet to the destination, right, that wants to start the session. The sequence number is in the SYN segment. The destination sends a synchronization acknowledgement or the SYN act in response to the SYN, and the initiator sequence number goes up by one. Now, if the source accepts the SYN act packet, it sends the acknowledgement segment to finish the handshake, right? So as you will see here, that will establish the connectivity between host one and host two. So here are some common applications that use TCP, just like web browser, email, FTP, printing, or network printing, and database transactions. Now, a connection is made between the IP source and the IP destination to make sure the application is ready to receive data and improve reliability. During the process of setting up the first connection, information is shared about the receiver can do, and starting perimeters are agreed upon. Then during the connection, these parameters are used to 
keep track of the data transfer. When the computer sending the data sends it, it gives each packet a sequence number. The receiver then sends back an acknowledgement number that is the same as the next sequence number um, that was expected. The protocol can tell when data has been lost, duplicated, or arrived out of order because of this exchange of sequence and acknowledgement numbers. Now let's talk about UDP or User Data Guard Protocol. So reliability or guaranteed delivery is not always needed or even wanted. For example, if one or two parts of a VOIP stream don't arrive, it would only stop the stream for a short time. This could cause a momentary change in the sound of the voice, but the user might not even notice. Real-time applications like voice streaming can handle dropped packets as long as the number of dropped packets as a whole is low. Here are some of the common applications that use UDP, like DNS or domain name systems, VOIP, VOI, uh, voice over IP, or TFTP, or Trivial File Transfer Protocol. UDP gives applications best effort delivery and doesn't need the track of the state of data that's already been sent. Also, UDP doesn't have to connect to the receiver, so it's called connectionless, right? Now, there are a lot of times when best effort delivery is better than reliable delivery. A connectionless protocol is good for applications that need to send and receive information quickly without checking that it was received. Now, UDP is also better for services that involve transactions like DNS and DHCP. In transaction type services, all that happens is a simple question and answer. If the client doesn't get a response, it just sends another query which is more efficient and uses fewer re resources than TCP. Now let's talk about network applications and protocols. First one is FTP. File transfer protocol or FTP is a standard network protocol used to send files from one host to another over a TCP-based network like the internet. FTP is one of the oldest and most popular ways to move files across the internet. User can use it to do things like upload and download files, make and delete directories, and manage file permissions. FTP is usually used by business and organizations to move large files like software updates, multimedia content, and other types of data between servers and workstations and clients. Web developers also frequently use FTP to upload and manage website files on a remote server. FTP uses a client-server model where a client program asks the server program to transfer files and the server program responds. FTP also has a control channel and data channel that are used to send and receive files. The control channel is how the client and server talk to each other like when the client sends a connect command and the server responds, while the data channel is used to transfer files. Both active and passive modes can be used with FTP. In active mode, the client connects to the server first. In passive mode, the server connects to the client first. So when the client is behind the firewall or a NAT or network address translator, passive mode is often used because it can help get around firewall restrictions. Now let's talk about SFTP. Secure File Transfer Protocol, or STP, is also a network protocol that lets you access, move files, or access files, move files, and manage files over a safe data stream. Now based on SSH protocol, or Secure Shell, SFTP provides strong authentication and encryption for data in transit. SFTP works in the same way as FTP. It has like a client-server architecture, and uses a control channel and a data channel to communicate and send files. But unlike FTP, which sends data in plain text and doesn't have any security features, SFTP encrypts both the control channel and the data channel. Let's make sure that the data is safe and can't be listened to or changed. In addition to encryption and authentication, SFTP has a number of security features such as the ability to delete files securely, control, who has access to file security and resume a secure file transfer. Because of these features, SFTP is a great way to send financial information, personal information, and confidential files over the internet. 
SFTP is used in light in a lot of wide range of industries and applications like finance, healthcare, and government. It works with many operating systems, including Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Businesses and organizations often use it for secure file transfer and management, <laughs> like moving files between servers and workstations, uploading and downloading files from a remote web server, and backing up data to a safe place. Let's talk about TFTP. TFTP stands for Trivial File Transfer Protocol. It is a simplified uh, version of File Transfer Protocol. And TFTP is made to let you transfer files, but it doesn't have any or have as many features or security measures such as in, in FTP or SFTP. The UDP or User Data Gun Protocol is what TFTP is based on. And it uses a client server setup to transfer files. TFTP is different from FTP in that it only uses one channel for both communication and file transfer. Because it only has one channel and doesn't have any security features, TFTP is much easier and faster to use than FTP. TFTP is often used for uh, basic file transfers in small networks and for booting and loading firmware images over the network. It is also used to upgrade uh, firmware and transfer configuration files in embedded systems like routers and switches. But because it only does a few things and has no security feature, TFTP is not good for most modern networks, especially when it comes to sending sensitive or private data. For this, it is best to use a more secure protocol like SFTP, which encrypts and verifies data while it is in transit. All right, let's talk about HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is a network protocol used to send and receive information on the World Wide Web. HTTP means Hypertext Transfer Protocol is a request response protocol, which means that a client, like a web browser, sends a request to a server, or much like a web server, and the server sends back a response. HTTP is used to send information in the form of web pages, which is called hypertext documents. These um, web pages can have text, pictures, videos, and other kinds of media. So to get them, you can use a uniform resource locator or URL like https www.cisco.com in a web browser, right? HTTP is meant to be simple and flexible uh, protocol and lets a wide range of uh, multimedia content be made and shared. HTTP uses TCP right, to make sure that data is sent reliably and quickly, and it uses a standard message format to define how requests and responses are put together. Now, HTTP is used by most websites on the internet, and it is based uh, for the World Wide Web. HTTP is used by most websites to serve web pages and other content. HTTP is also used by API servers and RESTful web services to other types of application. In recent years, the growing popularity of mobile devices and the need for safe online transaction led to the creation of HTTPS, which is a secure or a more secure version of HTTP. HTTPS uses encryption to protect the privacy and security of data that is sent over the internet. This makes it an important tool for e-commerce banking and other applications that need secure online transaction, tool for a wide range of applications that need to make sure online transactions are secured. All right? Yep, we covered HTTPS. We're going to go deep dive on on what HTTPS is, right? It means Hypertrack, hypertext transfer protocol secure, right? Again, it's a more secure version of HTTP, which is used to send and receive information on the World Wide Web. HTTP sends information as plain text, but HTTPS encrypts, encrypts the information being sent, making it safer and more private. In an HTTPS connection, the client, like a web browser, and the server, like a web server, set up a secure connection using a protocol called Secure Sockets Layer or SSL or its successor, 
or the newer one, which is TLS, or Transport Layer Security. This secure connection makes sure that no one else can read or change the information being sent. HTTPS is often used for e-commerce, online banking, and other online transactions that need to be secure. When HTTPS is used, sensitive information like credit card numbers and passwords are kept private and safe. Now let's talk about the next one, which is DHCP, which is a very important um, concept in network protocols, right? So DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, um, is a protocol that is used to give IP addresses to devices on the network automatically. DHCP's main goal is to make managing a network easier and reduce the amount of manual configuration that network devices need. When a device like a computer connects to a network, it sends a broadcast request for an IP address. The DHCP server, which is usually a router or a separate server, listens for these requests and gives the device making the request an IP address that is available. The DHCP server can give the device more information than just an IP address, such as the subnet mask, the default gateway, and the DNS server. The main benefit of DHCP is that it gets rid of the need for each device on the network to have its IP address set up manually. It also makes it easy to change how the network is set up because the changes can be made on the DHCP server instead of on each device. DHCP also helps to avoid IP address conflicts, which can happen when two devices on a network are given the same IP address by a mistake. Right? The DHCP server keeps track of the IP addresses it gives out and makes sure that each one is different. Right? That's DHCP. And the last protocol that we're going to discuss today is DNS, or what we call as domain name system. It is a protocol that uh, turns domain names like, for example, www.cisco.com into an IP address that a computer understands. So if you go to Windows, go to CMD, right? You type NSLOOKUP, www.cisco.com. Uh, based on your location, you will get a specific public IP address. In my end, I see 72.163.4.185. So the main goal of DNS is to let people access websites and other resources on the internet by using easy to remember names instead of IP addresses. So imagine if you want to go to cisco.com, so you have to memorize this IP address, 72.163.4.185. It's, it's hard. And there's just a lot of IP addresses, right? Millions. <laughs> so when a user types a domain name into a web browser, the browser sends a request to a DNS server here, right, on the right side, um, to turn the domain name into an IP address because that's what the computer understands. The DNS server looks up the requested domain in its database and sends back the IP addresses if it has it. If the DNS server doesn't have the information, it will send the request to other DNS servers until the IP address is found. DNS is an important part of how the internet works because it lets people access websites and other internet resources by typing it in easy to remember domain names instead of IP addresses. DNS also helps with things like um, load balancing and email routing, which are very important for the internet to work well. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. This lesson, we spoke about TCP IP. We spoke, we, con we uh, compared TCP versus UDP. We spoke about the common network applications and protocols like FTP, TFTP, SFTP, what else? DNS, DHCP, HTTP, and HTTPS. Again, thank you for watching the video.